Welcome to Digitales episode 14. And with me, I have today Umar Umari, the multi talented, multi faceted individual who is not just an architect and an event creator, but is also a member of the Provincial Assembly of Sin. What's happening, Umar? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today. No, thank you for the time. So now I'm giving you a choice. You can right. be one of the three things you are architect, event creator, or MPA forever. Which one of those three things? Architect forever. Architect forever. But you right. didn't start with architecture. You went to med school. You went to Bakai for a year. <laughs> How does yeah. a doctor in training give up medicine and then end up at, uh, you know, Indus? That was sneaky. You put that in there. <laughs> well, uh, let, well, I have a, my, my entire family is, is, you know, either architects or engineers. So okay. we've got one, you know, black sheep in the family who's a doctor, which is my sister. Uh, the rest are all okay. architects. My brother's an architect. My wife is an architect. My sisters are my sister's an architect. My father's an engineer, and my chacha's an architect That's practicing in New York. Wow. So yeah, uh, we've always been in touch with uh, the thesis and the projects and uh, the social aspect that comes with being an architect. Uh, and I right. think that's what led us to, you know, that's what led me to be, you know, an event manager uh, and a, and then finally a politician. So it was the architecture which sort of instigated all of this. And that's why I would always choose architect for life. Right. Yeah. But then you deviated momentarily, right? Why did medicine even come into your realm of consciousness? What was the trigger? Uh, I think it was, um, again, about helping people. It was about okay. being in a position or being in a place that I would be able to reach out to a lot of people and be able to help right. a, lot, a lot more people with the profession that I'm doing. Um, and if you look at it, architecture, uh, even the events that we do for the city, and then um, right. uh, the the, uh, the the the, polit the politics—it's uh, all sort of trying to get, get uh, trying to give back, trying to help out as much as you can, or give back to the people. So that's I think right. that's the underlying sort of thing. I don't know if there's a profession for that, uh, right. but that's the commonality between everything. And whereas a doctor okay. has a little bit less of an outreach, I think a politician right. has maximum. Right. And so you actually jumped into the med school thing, but you know, you, I, you took that conscious decision that, you know what, this isn't for me. And you stepped out. Uh, was yeah. that difficult? Because it's, you know, families, you know, likes their kids taking a linear trajectory and yeah. this is not linear. So how did yeah. you manage that? Well, I, uh, I think it was, it was difficult initially because um, I know my mother uh, was really focused on med school. Uh, because it had been something that I had also wanted to do for the longest time, and then she sort of uh, was, you know, piggybacked on the idea and then and then ran with it. Uh, but right. uh, so it was difficult. I remember the day that I decided to drop out and say that you know what, I don't think med school is it for me. Uh, she was very upset at, at home, so it was difficult convincing her. Uh, my dad was a little bit more chill with the whole with the whole thing, um, and right. being an engineer and having an, an architect as a brother, it was a lot more of a fit for him. I thought I think he actually supported it, so that was half my battle right there. And then obviously the family, my sisters, etc., being architects, it was a uh, it was it was not like it was unknown territory for them. You know, I wasn't running off and they, becoming. They, they were thankful um, you saw the light, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't. They were, I think they were thankful that it was at least not. You know, I'm, I'm not going ahead and 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 uh, choosing a bit a, a more difficult profession, which is maybe a musician or a, or a or a fine artist or something, which are difficult professions, unless you're very, 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 you know, right. Uh, uh, you're you you're very dedicated to that single sort of thing. Um, right. So yeah, I think it was architecture was was alright, even though it's still uh, it it was at the time, um, and I'm talking about what 10, 12 years ago. It was still something that right. was it was getting there. It had been established architecture obviously as a as a profession, but um, right. now what architects uh, architect today I think are far better off than what they were at the time. Right. And so then you switched over to Indus. You did your architecture. Now you spent your early years in Saudi, right? That's right. And so most people would be like, yeah, I have done my bachelor's, I'm going to go abroad. You know, but you mm -hmm. didn't go abroad and stay abroad. Any reason yeah. why you didn't take that call? Um, I think like most people, I came back for family. You know, it's not, it's not, a, right. not a very, it's not a very, 
uh, complicated reason. I came back for family. Yeah. Um, that's it. It was. It was. I. I felt like I could do a lot more over here than I would over there. I wasn't. Uh, I'm not. You know. I. I felt that Pakistan as well. Coming back to Pakistan, it is a. It really was. People say. You know. It. You know. America is a land of opportunities. I think Pakistan is in a land of opportunities, um, and, I, and and I think and I and I do believe that even today, there's so many areas, there's so many aspects, and so many industries that are waiting to be discovered and waiting to be um, um, uh, streamlined. So it's it's, right. it's it's just a matter of you know looking for the right one and then taking it from there. So yes, I think Pakistan has a lot that you can do. And so you you found. And uh, you know, an industry that had a lot of opportunity that had not been touched, and that is one around events. You know, um, specifically the Eat Karachi Eats event. You know, tell me about how you stumbled into this. I mean, a guy who's doing architecture graduates, you know, is thinking about building buildings and homes or whatever. How do you get into the food uh, event space? Well. Uh you know, when when you when I started off from architecture, it was you know, if you're talking about hardcore design, you're also talking about uh, social issues. You cannot be an architect and be ignorant of the social issues you know that you surround that you're surrounded with. Um, right. And I think it was that mindset that was inculcated in us at the Indus Valley. If you look at uh, you know some of the founders, Shahid Abdullah, uh, uh, Akil Bilgrami, Nujaha Bilgrami, they're all you know that's there's TCF that comes out of there, there's Hunar that's coming out of there. These are all huge, huge uh, innovative projects and innovative um, um, movements which are sort of and uh, which are giving back to the city. So that sort of mindset uh, I, I I took with me and I and I still have it today. Even the the project that I did, for instance, my thesis project was revitalizing a public space. That was thesis for, and I and I did Kimadi as a food street. Okay, um, interesting. That, that was my that was my that was my thesis project. Even for masters in the UK, uh, it still it was it was again it was to do with the public space. My thesis was public space. What was but, it about public spaces that that was your interest that led to your interest in public people. space? It's a place for bringing people together. Again, okay. it's a place where people get together, um, and it's about it's it's about if I get into the details of it, the difference between a space and a place, the association. What is the difference? The yeah, that's an interesting difference. So the memories, the associations, and the experiences that you have in a space transform it into a place. It's it's mm -hmm. basically I'm to put it even simpler. It's a difference between a house and a home. Okay, a house Sorry. is something which is doesn't have a spirit to it, right? You go in there, it's completely empty. You start to build it. You have a family there. You have memories associated, and then it becomes your home. Right. So that's the Makes difference, sense. basically. Okay. Um, so when I shifted to events, it was basically design, but it, uh, a fast forward design. So I would have to do right. the event within a few hours, not like an interior or a house right. where you're looking at months and months and months uh, to get completed. You're looking at at uh, an event which is high-end design. You have you know the floral and this and the and the furniture and the lighting and all of those uh, those things that we were trained for uh, as an architect. I started to implement in events, and we did high-end events. We did fashion shows. We did the Sin Club galas. We did the uh, we did the the we did concerts and conferences and you name it, both uh, uh, nation uh, internationally and locally. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we said in 2014. We decided that you know what we have the capability and we have the means um, and the tools to create an event where we can start to bring people together. So that sort of idea came back again, and that's why we chose. And it was very difficult to choose uh, a venue which was suitable because we wanted to be as open as possible mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it, as welcoming as possible to every uh, sort of tier walk of life. Yeah. Yeah. To every tier. Um, and so we chose. And how long had you been? And how long have you been doing events up until this point? Well, we did. We started doing events. My partners and I started doing events in two thousand and seven. As soon as so I you got had back. seven years. So seven years of event experience. Yeah. And then you decided to link back that whole notion of people, places, yeah. and spaces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We do that for something that we could do ourselves, and it was a. For the most part, it wasn't a business venture. It was a social experiment. It was us just giving back because, again, we were 
we were doing things for you know when you're when you're doing events you do a lot of work for charities so you've right. got the community center branches you've got the you know the lrbt and the special olympics and we had right. done all those we had done them uh, and the, yeah, so we were we were again we were, we were very used to being in that sort of space to begin with and then we but said where okay where did the food angle come in from i'll just tell you i mean because so i we, remember in 2014 the reason i asked in 14 there was a car show that mm -hmm. happened in frere hall Mm -hmm. And I remember that was a great use of the space and why that did not happen every year and it attracted a lot of people. But you chose food. I chose instead. food. I chose food in Frere Hall. Frere Hall was the place that had to well, that we needed to launch Karachi Eat. And without I think the space, uh, I don't think you know Karachi would eat would have been what it what, what it is today. Um, it was a place where everyone had associations with. You know, from whichever walk of life you come from, chances are you were either there with your parents or your daddies, and they have some story about how they used to be. And it was true. Frere Hall was designed to be a communal space. It's a, it was designed right. for that. It was we weren't. No one was using it because we weren't allowed to use it because the American cast that used to sit right in front of it. So when we right. initially went to the space, we said uh, they they didn't even know. They said you know for 25 years we haven't done anything over here officially like this. Uh, so right. I don't know what the rental would be like. So there was no there was no <laughs> rental system. There was no there was no SOP. There was nothing that they had to begin right. with. Um, and we chose food because it was the least uh, controversial controversial thing. It's it's it wasn't music where you know you have a younger sort of crowd and the older right. people shy away, or you have maybe a car show. It, it was it was it was that broad uh, ended that you could have people from everywhere coming in and that's what so, we share. So all age groups, all socioeconomic all groups, common exactly. denominators, food. Exactly, exactly. And we use that okay. to sort of mm -hmm. bring people together. It's as simple as that. And then we replicated this in Lahore and Islamabad. Again, Lahore, we chose um, we chose the, the race course, which is again, right. they, they say, you know, no one ever does anything over here. We do, we do um, uh, their, 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 their festival, I can't remember what, what it's called. Uh, mango, not the mango festival, but the it's such a famous festival. Uh, I've never been to it, so that's why I wouldn't know. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a, it's but a, that's it's a great a, location. The race course awesome. is actually a beautiful location. Lots of expansive space there. Yeah, yeah. And but they had never used it for a food festival. No, never a food festival. They had used it for this particular festival. I can't remember, but uh, the one that happens every Feb to March. Right. Uh, Basant. Basant. Sorry. Okay, so they I have, thought you would think of something else because they no, haven't no, had no. Basant in many years. So now they've banned it, but before they used to do Basant right. there. Okay. Till, till, till 2016, we were doing Basant there at the race course. And again, it had to be race course because a public park, everyone is associated with it at some time there. And everyone didn't understand why we were doing it. They said, you know, why don't you go to, uh, to do it at a golf, do it at the golf club, yep. you know, the, the Royal Palm, or do it, you know, right. at one of these private locations that everyone sort of understands. And we're like, no, it has to be a public space. You don't understand right. it's about bringing people together, not segregating yeah. them. And so that's how we, you know, we we uh, went to Lahore. Islamabad was the same. Initially, we were unhappy uh, because we had to do it at the Jinnah Convention Center, which is a great location. It has a huge park. It was very controlled, but we had to introduce Islamabad Eat and the idea of that kind of festival very uh, carefully to the people of Islamabad. So Why very, is that? Why was the audience different? The audience is very different, I think, in Islam, but a very, very different audience. And you've got a lot of consulates over there. You've got a lot of people who are there from different countries uh, who are either visiting. It's a sort of a different feel and a different vibe. So they had to, I would say, had to, it had to be tailored uh, for them and then presented in that way. And it was a great, great choice. Uh, and we ended up doing it for two years or three years at Islamabad in the same uh, location. And then we finally shifted last year to the Jinnah Ground or Jinnah Park, which is just amazing. Mm -hmm. They're from F10 Park, which is just gorgeous. And that's where it was always supposed to be because you've got this right. really huge expanse of greenery and green space. Really yep. old trees. It's just, it was perfect for it. And we, when we did it there last year, I said, this is, you know, Islamabad is now, you know, has been right. Yeah, it's it's arrived now. Now we've finally got it to where we want it to be. So, and yeah. and you've had it now in the three cities, right? So far. Yeah. Any plans to go into like the let's say Multan, Faisalabad, Sakhar? You know uh, why not? Because there there's such a dearth of events in these cities, and there is a sizable population. Why not capitalize on that? In a different format, perhaps. In a different format, 
um, it's very difficult to sort of, uh, you know, it's a balance right now where you say, okay, you know, this is the things that we're offering and this is the standard we've sort of taken it up to. Now we have to replicate that. I wouldn't want to do a, a half big job at many of these cities. So we're looking for, right. obviously, when we do the event, it's about sponsorships and we have to find the right sponsor. And uh, obviously the amount then sort of comes into play. Um, so sponsors aren't too keen on a high end event in Sakkar or Multan, etc. They always say, oh no, it's, you know, it's, it's Multan or it's Gujarat. Or it's, so you know what, you, mm -hmm. you don't have to do that high. And that's always been uh, something that I disagree with. Like you don't design down. There's no such thing as designing right. down. You always design it's up. It's about you audiences, about right? It. At the, and, 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 yeah. So you, whoever the crowd is, you don't, you, you, you design for them, of course, but you uh, are hoping to achieve a certain standard, which then they can sort of relate to. You can modify right. your design so it's more relatable, but you don't design down just because, you know, it's maybe a less populated area. Right. Um, or, a, you know, it has a different uh, socioeconomic setup. You don't do that. And the, and and what, the, and the brands what, never really understood that. No, they don't. They, they, they didn't understand. They didn't understand that, which is why we're very, very careful. And even, you know, Islamabad and Lahore, it wasn't something that happened overnight. So it right. was at least two years apart where we said, okay, first Karachi happened 2014 and then 15. And then 2016 was the first time Lahore happened. And then 2000, I think it was 17 or 18 where Islamabad happened. I think it was 17. That's a big gap. Yeah. So yeah, it was us perfecting ourselves in two cities, spreading ourselves across two cities, understanding the dynamics, the, the labor, the workforce, the people, and then shifting it to. So it's been a, it's, it's been quite a journey for us and uh, discovering these new these new cities and the, and the people there. So now def define. You've worked in these three cities. You work with the different. Let's say you work with the different. Uh, you know, food professionals. You work with the different companies who help set it up. Can yeah. you describe the difference between the work mentality of Karachi, Lahore, and Islamabad? <laughs> do I have to? <laughs> yes. Do I have to do that? <laughs> That's the <laughs> first question. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's like the cities, all right? Karachi is very, very dynamic. It's got people from all over the country. It's, 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 a, it's a happening metro metropolis, I would say. But right. Lahore is very, very laid back. They're very chilled out. And I think it's part of the culture in Lahore, the Punjabi culture generally. Right. They, I think they would, I would say they know how to enjoy life a lot more than the people in Karachi do. Karachi people are okay. very, very focused. They're like, you know, this is our job. Ye karna hai, nine to five. Uh, we have to make ends meet. You know, it's very, very cut pace. Right. In Islamabad, they don't exchange their enjoyment for life or their or their joy for life. They don't exchange it, you know, very easily. They hang on to it and they really, really know how to enjoy, whether it's food or whether it's just hanging out at the park or or just having a good time. They know how to enjoy their time. And I think that's is a good thing for them, but it's a bad thing for us when you're saying, Okay, you know what, we've got four hours for setup, we need to get this job done. And they're like, Don't worry. You know, and that, <laughs> that is just whole jaga is just not something we're look good, okay with. So what right. we had to do is we ended up taking everything from Karachi. All right. So the, the whole team, team from Karachi was set up. The whole huh? setup. The whole setup. That's everything expensive. Goes. Yeah, the whole thing. Well, and that's not that's not business not. wise. It's not efficient, right? Is actually it actually not? Actually not because uh, our head office is in Karachi. Um, it basically is the cost of transport. Our labor, right. is, you know, we have a, a, a full, fully functioning workshop. So that is throughout the year. So if I were to close it down in Karachi and say, okay, I'm going to hire a new set of labor, that is actually more expensive. And similarly okay. with the sort of things that we do, so the panaflexes and, this, and the frames, et cetera. And if it's not right, you know, I have to trash it and do it over again. Right. So that costs money. Uh, and again, you know, that... Time is everything when you're setting up an event. It's all about timing and getting the finishes right. So we've had to. It's been a, it's been difficult uh, working in Lahore. It's been difficult. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't you know. Uh, Was Islamabad uh, as difficult as well as Lahore? No, no. The uh, dynamic in Islamabad is different. Islamabad is they got it immediately. They got it. It's funny because in Islamabad, you know, when you look at the lines now, standing in a line for right. a Pakistani is. Well, it's like standing in yeah. line, but there's no valet, 
You know, what, why, why, I think if there's anything, if one of your greatest achievements is that you've made people stand in lines waiting for burgers and out of walk. all the things. Yeah, and walk. Yeah. Because we don't know that. And walk, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So learn to walk, learn to stand in line. Um, so in Islamabad, they were like happily, happily standing in line. And I was like shocked right. because I see these long lines and they're, they're, they've got smiles on their face and they're excited to be there. Right. And they know what to expect and they know what it's about. It's not the same everywhere. Um, so, Islamabad. Do Lahori's like, like to Lahori's like to stand in line? No, no. no <laughs> it, yeah. Not at so all. How did I, you manage I, that? With great difficulty. Lahore has right. been difficult for us. I would. I am not gonna lie. Lahore has been uh-huh. a, a very challenging city for us uh, in terms of this event, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, the fact that we, perhaps, you know, we, it's taken us time to understand the mindset there. No, it's a different mindset, and you have to be part of that to really, you know, cater to and design for that mindset. I mean, we've done weddings there, we've done events there, we've done loads of events right. there. Uh, but you know, events is a niche sort of thing, so you know that's that's an easier thing. But when you're looking at a public event, you have to understand the people, and if you don't understand the people and the mindset, then it's not going to. If we're in a public event, then it's going to be very difficult for you to pull this pull it off. And it's taken us time to understand. It's taken us a and lot of cuisine time. Cuisine-wise, cuisine-wise, what works in Karachi does it work in Lahore and Islamabad, or are they three different palettes? Um, it's a different palette. I think uh, they're different palettes. The Lahore, Islamabad, and Karachi. I, I would say they're 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 not the same. They're, they're, it's so like it's, burgers and fries does well here. Wings, you know, so experimental fusion. You know, you see a lot of new stuff in Karachi. What does Lahore and Islamabad? No, Lahore what did you see Islamabad. work for them? Lahore and Islamabad has great stuff that's coming out of the the uh, there as well, um, but for instance, Islamabad sushi was a big deal, and not really? so much in surprising. Fact, yeah, yeah, surprisingly, we, and we there were like two stalls, two sushi stalls in Islamabad. I remember in 2016, and those guys sold out immediately, like within two hours of the festival opening. So Islamabad, I mean, the, the burgers that we took from here. Uh, and we've tried to exchange. So we've tried to mm-hmm. take people from Karachi to Lahore, and that's why I can say that it's a different sort of palette. Mm-hmm. We've tried to take the, the 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 food from Karachi and the vendors from Karachi and do a mix up. So some of them participated in Lahore, some of them part of Islamabad, and their stalls. I I don't think they were very successful with them. Um, wow. So, okay. Yeah, so which is why I say that it's not it's not like they you know if you just put food in front of them and it's gonna they're gonna you know they're gonna buy right. it. They are picky. They're very picky about the food. So yeah, it's not the same. And power. so now you've 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 worked around the country. You've built this event that's done very well over the last six seven years now. Yeah. And you've been exposed to three very different populations, right? Three very different people. Yeah. <clears throat> How does this knowledge come into play with you being a holder of public office, where you are dealing with only people all day, right? Yeah. I I don't think. Um, I mean, for me, obviously, being in uh, in Karachi, like the mindset is different in Karachi and, and Lahore and Islamabad. So, f- be, doing a public event in Karachi has definitely helped me understand uh, society in general. Um, I don't know if it actually helps me um, as a um, as an MPA. I don't think I don't know if it has, or maybe it indirectly uh, or subconsciously has sort of affected me, or or been able to. You know, you know, help me or engage with people better, or help me make decisions better. I don't, I don't, maybe, I don't think it's, it's, I don't see it directly. Let's put it that way. I don't okay. think it's directly affected. Maybe at some subconscious level, it might have. It's different. And, and why Obviously, would you go? Why would you go for provincial assembly? I mean, you've, you're running a successful business, right? You're mid thirties, late thirties. You've, you've built something great here. I mean, why get into politics at this age? Uh, you know, I asked this question. Uh, we had a guest, Muthu Zawahal. I asked him the same question. You know, your 30s and your 40s, 40s are for building your career, for creating sort of a brand name for yourself, creating some wealth, settling down your families. And maybe 50s onwards, you get into politics and give back. You know, this is this the right time to be entering politics? And if so, why does it make sense for you? If you speak to a lot of people, they would definitely agree with you they would say you know what you're in the middle of your career you're you know you're setting up you're running a business how could you possibly have the time 
to uh, get into politics and politics takes a lot of time a tremendous amount of time a tremendous amount of time uh, because you're looking at on ground at the constituency and then you're obviously looking at legislation and you're looking at you know being in the assembly and every uh, incident that happens you have to be on top of it you have to know the game you have to know exactly. where you stand you have to be the voice of the public um, it was it was uh, my my family didn't have any idea that I was getting into politics no idea until they saw my my face up on the campaign poster and they said you know okay what? By any chance competing? I said, yeah, right. I am because we had informally been with, uh, you know, had been part of the politics. You know, in 2013, you know, when when I think most of Karachi came out to vote, or most people my age came out to vote, mm -hmm. or had ever seen the roadside, or had come out on the roads and to be a part of this public uh, event, let's just say, or be part of this um, part of this city, part of this country, you know, to actually cast that vote, which I don't mm -hmm. think happened too much in the past. You know, the people, uh, the generation before us, and I'm going to say it, you can record it, the generation before us really, really left this, this country in pieces. They really did. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. talking about your father, my father, and our grandfather. They really weren't thinking about perhaps, maybe, and maybe it's not their fault. Maybe it's just the mm -hmm. mindset, they just, you know, 1947, you know, you have in partition, you're coming with that mindset that we have to survive. That's our first yes. priority. Let's think about exactly. culture and society and a good and good civics and all of that much later. We'll 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 deal with that later. Right now right. we just you know we're coming out of partition and we've you know we're, we're we're trying to make a living. And I don't think they thought about those things. And we we're having to deal with that. This generation, because you know our parents worked hard and they gave us this life which is comfortable. So we can now we're in a position afford to, to think about it. I think, I think, think we can afford to. Yeah, we can afford to think about these things. And if if in if you know you're waiting till fifty to get into politics, you're not very current. You know, you're not very current. You still you've got a mindset which is which is old, which is an older mindset. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not thinking innovation. You're not thinking creatively. You're not thinking um, you know, how can I undo or how can I redo or how can I completely invent what uh, has been happening constantly. But, and but a political almost, career, but the challenge with the political career is, here is that it becomes restrictive. You know, there's a lot of, you know, a scrutiny, whether it's justified or not, that comes your way. And whether that scrutiny that's unjustified comes your way and you're also a businessman at the, you know, at the, at the same time, yeah. How do you operate that, right? I mean, how do you sort of manage to create an income stream, a legitimate income stream through your business while holding a public office and avoiding that scrutiny that jeopardizes both? That's to I, me the challenge. You know, Fazan, I've paid the price for it. I pay the price every day. Um, you can't have both things, unfortunately. A lot of the practice, a lot of my practices, you know, now I've, I've tried to autopilot as much as possible, try to put a CEO in place. It's a, mm -hmm. and obviously within two years, it's been difficult to sort of let go and let the business do its own thing. And then, but I don't think I know how to let go of, of, of the business because like, you know, you've created this, this, this thing from, from scratch and uh, it's, it's, you know, you can't, I, there's constantly new things that I have to come up with or new, new areas which need to be explored. And a CEO, yes, will definitely do that, but not as as well as you know something that is that you know that is your baby essentially. And has, so and has your baby life. suffered because of this decision? Has your tremendously, baby tremendously, tremendously? And do you regret has. that? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, I do not regret it. Um, look, politics initially used to be like you said for fifty or sixty or maybe a, a zamindar who had a steady source of income. He sits there. He's had this land for ages and it's, nothing's going to change. And he's gone. So he has really all the time in the world to do that. And nothing they to might, lose. And nothing to lose. They might be educated. And guess what? They might not be educated. And for the right. most part, they weren't that educated. That's where we stand today. True. A lot of them were not educated. And then you say, all right, uh, I'll sit here and I'll make a big fuss about it on Facebook. And I'll make a big fuss about social media on, on social media. And I'll do my own little thing. I'll make my little noise. And I think, oh, yeah, I've done my part. But 
that's not good enough. Um, and I think mm -hmm. we were done with doing that. We said, all right, maybe we've done as much as we could from the outside, being a social, uh, you know, we're, I wouldn't call a social activist, but uh, a socially active um, company or person or individuals mm -hmm. that we were. We said, all right, now let's let's see what it is from the inside. You know what? Maybe if we want change to come, then you have to have the younger, uh, educated, uh, highly educated people who have come with fresh ideas to sort of turn this thing around. Yes, you need experience, and I think that's where we're struggling because we don't come from a political background, and right. that's what we lack. You need to be a politician. You need to have been in that environment to understand you. I, I think it's very difficult. It's been difficult for us personally as businessmen to jump into this uh, this new world, literally, and we're not used to it. We're not used to having um, uh, to, 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 to this political scenario and navigating through this political scenario it's, it's been and if you were to if you were to summarize this experience of what it's been what two years now a little over two years yeah if you were to summarize this what have you seen so far in these two years wow um <laughs> a lot too well, much. okay what haven't yeah. you seen in these two years <laughs> ah. <laughs> Because that's going to lead, to my, and I'll give you a clue why I'm asking this. Because it's going to lead to my next question. You know, I mean, you want to jump in because you want to fix it. Young ideas, dynamic, fresh. This is the age. I get that. But based on what you've seen, and I'm sure you've seen a lot, is it really a changeable and b worth changing? It's definitely worth changing. Uh, it will always be worth changing. Um, but okay, then uh, is it changeable? It's so deep rooted. That's, that's very difficult. That's very difficult. It's not going to happen. I'll tell you what. I, I don't. I don't see it happening. Uh, perhaps not in my tenure. Uh, we won't see visible changes. Perhaps. Perhaps we'll see small changes for sure. We'll see things happening um, in pockets. There's really good stuff happening, but there's right. also things which are just the same. And for the common man, for things to just be the same, it's 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 difficult to digest. Um, for me, I would say being at the bottom tier of this political um, game, um, it's very difficult to be in charge of those changes. I cannot do it alone. I cannot say, all right, you know what? I came here and I did all of these changes because I haven't uh, as yet. I, don't, I, I, I lack the power to, to, to make those changes uh, in my constituency. And, and, and I can imagine, like, you were the guy who led Karachi Eats. It was your vision, your grand idea. You led all the changes. You made that thing happen. And you're saying that I'm kind of sort of putting that on the back burner to take on this role where I can't make the changes. I'm at the bottom rung, just exactly how you're saying it. Yeah. I mean, how, how is your mind, how, does, how do you adjust to that? I'm still adjusting to it, it's, uh, and it hasn't been easy because, you know, even my partner, obviously, who's been on this journey with me, who is just as as uh, responsible for cre the creation, Aslam Khan, obviously, who's, who's been just as resp uh, responsible for creating this change and bringing Karachi Eat and all these festivals, it's been an equal sort of thing. Um, he is well joined politics, so he's in, he's in, he's a member of the National Assembly, and so which means wow, he's okay. most of the time in Islam. Yeah, so most of the time okay. he's in Islamabad. So we both jumped into this. Like I said, it's been a company thing. Uh, Karachi has been CKO's baby. I wouldn't be fair to say that it's Omar Omari's baby. It's been CKO's mm -hmm. baby. Um, and we've both had to deal with this sort of change in mindset. Um, him obviously being more in Islamabad. But we've also been, with the good thing is we've, we're able to be amongst people on, our, on, on the ground. Um, whether that's enough to make a change, I mean, my 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 campaign, for instance, my, my my political campaign, I never promised anything to them, and I would say it because, like I said, I mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to lose. I was there because mm -hmm. I thought this is what I need to do, and I had a sort of higher purpose, a higher calling, and that with that faith, I put you know a step forward. Uh, I did, didn't ever promise these things. You know, a lot of people, a lot of politicians will promise things. I said. You know, I'm not going to promise you water. I'm not going to promise you that things are going to change overnight. I'm not going to promise you anything that you are expecting. Uh, this, these were my campaign right. speeches. I said, but what I can promise you is that I will be honest. That you will never have to complain. You'll never have a complaint. But I will be honest and I will be available. And I will make sure that 
every kind of effort that I can possibly make to make your life better or make my constituency a better place that I will that I will do. I will not leave any stone unturned. And those used to be, and that's how it's been. And 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 whether it's been sacrificing my company, which we have, Aslam and my, and myself, have, we've both made sacrifices uh, with our company. But you know what? Because of our intentions, Fazan. Because of our intention was 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 I think was was right. It was a pure intention. Our company has been is bigger than it was before. Wow! During company, this time, it's continued to grow. Time, it's bigger than what it was before, and I'm and I'm shocked sometimes. And I keep talking to us. You know, I said, Aslam, do you, do you see that? I mean, how is that possible? Here we are dedicating all our time to this company. And, you know, yes, we've took it to that level. And we were scared. We said, you know what, maybe maybe when, you know, we join politics, it's not going to be the same. It's it's the company. Could it, be because of, could, could it be because of the newfound access to different people at sort of, you know, positions of power? I mean, could that have some role to play? No, no, no. It's just it's it's been about it's been about uh, refining our brand. The access was always, okay. it's never an issue. I mean, you have access, even when you're not mm -hmm. into politics, everyone in Pakistan has access, you know, it's, it's everyone knows. Right. So it's, it's such a small sort of a, um, um, a, 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 a very tightly knit sort of society that we have. So everyone knows somebody or the other. So that was no, no, that was never a problem. And that's not helped us grow it. It hasn't grown because of that. It's grown because we've refined our brand. Um, and I think, uh, we've uh, we've sort of taken out the flim flam. We said, all right, you know what? These projects, uh, we, I, I don't think we can do these projects. I'm not going to do this project because it wastes too much time. And we focused on just the larger projects. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you an example. And I maybe I'm being, you know, it's 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 a, a really big headed for me to give you this example. But it's when sort of Steve Jobs came back to Apple, and he said, you know mm -hmm. what? I'm not going to work on this project and this project and this project. I'm just going to work on this i this iPod. Mm -hmm. you know what? And he and he got rid of all the flim flam, and he just worked on that iPod, and he revolutionized everything, because he mm. was able to, maybe by default, get rid of all the smaller projects which were taking up time, and people thought that you know we need to be in this area and have our name and our brand out in these areas to be a larger company, and that's not what did it. It was that little iPod which he started off with. Which grew in so finding that focus, the, you know, the iPhone and the iPad. We focus. We were able to focus. Yes, we've paid mm. the price in terms of our family time. Yes, we've paid the price in terms of refining the business. And you know, maybe, maybe if we were not, you know, if we were present, it would have gone in a whole bunch of different areas. And maybe it might not not have grown. I don't know. But for some reason, it's it it has grown, and we've been able to focus on projects which really matter now. And we're, we're very, kids? very focused. You have young kids? Two kids. We are, yeah, I have two kids. I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And how are so, you able to give them the time doing the focus projects and the public office? I mean, how? Because three and six-year-old kids can be very demanding, as I'm sure well, you know. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, a great day for me was always when I was able to get done with work really early. And when I say really early, I mean 6.30 and get home and then I just, I'm just with them. So it's completely with, with, with the family. So it's uh, sitting there with them during meal times. It's, it's you know, talking about their day. It's, it's playing with them and finding out what they've been up to. And, and obviously Hannah has been a huge part of that. Um, mm -hmm. So we've, I've tried to schedule my time as much as possible. So work, is separate and then going to the constituency i go alternate days or i leave two days and then i go i leave a gap so that's how i've been able to manage uh and uh, time with the family and um you know initially it was difficult because i was still understanding a lot of things so the first year i would say when well, you're just pulled in every direction it's so a blur <laughs> yeah so yeah it's a blur because you're, you're it's an eye and my area my constituency <laughs> I mean, I don't, it's not an easy constituency. It's district center, Azizabad, mm. 9 zero. You know, I'm the 9 zero MPA. So it's, it hasn't been an easy journey for me and it's been like a discovery. Um, yeah. So, I think it's been a discovery for them as well to find PTI in a place that was always MQM. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but 
the plus point is it's a very uh, and there's I mean it, district central generally is you've got very very highly educated people there. It's mm -hmm. it's one of the uh, I mean it's got the highest education sort of rate in 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 in, in district central, uh, and it all it's always been that way. And I think that's why MQM sort of came out from there as well because uh, it appealed and and they understood um you know what what and so, what so then having a young educated person for that constituency was the play and worked. is that it play worked. working out it, it works worked. it worked yeah it worked um Good. so i deal with uh, a great set of people there there's there's great groups over there there's great um uh, communities that i get to deal with uh, who understand right. what i'm doing who are patient enough to understand um what we're doing obviously it's 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 not a like an all win situation there it's it's been difficult you have difficult patches and difficult communities and different difficult decisions that you have to make there um but overall generally it's 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 they've, they've been very welcoming they've been very welcoming good so i'm i'm we're almost out of time but i'm going to ask you one last question sure. so 10 years the trajectory you're taking sounds like you know you're going to hold some major public office 10 years out where do you see yourself 10 years out? I don't know if it's public office or um, if it's, I mean, I will be doing, in 10 years, I will be doing, inshallah, I will be doing something or the other for uh, the city, for the people, for sure. Whether I'm in politics or out of politics, that I'm not sure. Um, but it's always going to be something that I will be doing uh, for the people, Cre whether it's creating ecosystems in the food industry or whether it's creating an ecosystem in the music industry. We set up ecosystems, um, uh, you know, the, the, the complete circle where you start off and then we finish off with a restaurant or whatever. So it's always been a complete ecosystem and it's about growing an industry. Um, I don't know if I'll hold public office maybe 10 years down the line. Um, it depends on how these five years go. Now we're still learning. Right. So it depends, really depends right. on these five right. years. If I feel that I've made enough of a change uh, and I'm able to and continuing on this journey, will put me in a position that where I can actually have or make those kind of changes, then yes, I will continue. If not, then I will not, you know, force myself there. So you're almost halfway there. A couple almost more months halfway. and you're almost halfway there. Yep, yep. So ha hang in there. I'm sure you can still drive positive change. I think that's the advantage of young people entering politics is yeah. you, the advantage you have over most others is the energy and the drive. Yeah. I think, you know, the energy levels as you, age start to dwindle and i think that's the advantage that we uh, young folks should take I mean, advantage of so to speak it's it's funny because you see our prime minister and i'm not just saying this because he's from my party the energy right. that he has and the vision he has and the passion that he has it's unmatched we cannot even get close to that you know and he's what pushing 60 60 plus so you yeah, know more than it, that yeah so it's unmatched even today, so you'll have these young MPAs who who will never who will never be able to match it because he is God has given him the energy right. and the passion and the vision to stick to what he's he believes in and he and he and he's sticking with it and he is going to be making those changes in China. Well, yeah. I wish you all the best on that journey. I'm hoping Thank that you. you can drive positive change not just in your constituency but in the assembly and of course. More importantly, you know, your Karachi Eats and your NAC, like citywide Eats project continues to thrive. Um, best of luck on your ventures. And again, thanks a lot for joining us and spending so much, the time. Thank you. thank you all for tuning in to episode 14 of Digitales. See you next thank time. Thank you so much, Razan. Bye. See you, Omar. Bye-bye.